Would you guys like me to maybe talk about the maps and the mobs that we run through? I could maybe try to do some kind of like, you know, a little sum up of what is good, what is bad and why. As we see so many in a very short time frame. Okay, so let's try this, guys. I'm gonna be talking about the maps and the monsters that I'm getting and try to give like a bit of like pointers about directions in the maps and also like what is a good and bad monster type and why, but it will be quite fast. So let's see. So here we have really good monster type is Be Accursed. This is one of the top tier monster types for almost every single build in the game. Not just in a season of Ring of Fire, because it has small juicy trash that follows you very fast. The Accursed are nice, the bees are dangerous, but uh, you also have some bigger guys like the dogs, that's really good. So this is usually one of the things to fish for. And if you find them on a big open map, you can get a um, really nice progression there. Okay, this is terrible. This is one of the worst monster types in the game. Red Archers, it's called. You see all these like hooded red archers. And there's a bunch of other things. There's also angels. Angels are gonna be always very careful, especially in hardcore, because they can um, do massive amounts of hits with, uh, with their hammer sometimes. Same with Aerophon. He can one-shot you like easily sometimes. It's very rare, but yeah, they just dunk you and boom. Obviously, this was a very good map. Battlefields is always like the one thing to look for together with Festering. Here we have... this is the Hulks and Golgors. Used to be extremely good monster type, but they heavily nerfed it. So usually this is not really great because you cannot pull these Golgors and they're kind of slow and fat and you don't get much area damage on them. But um, this is nice for speed farming. So when you have a map like this and speed farming and you one-shot everything, really fast progression. Okay, here's Zombie Grotesque. It's like one of everyone's favorite. Easy trash, juicy trash. You get lots of extra targets, lots of extra area damage. You have these modders here that spawn more zombies. Really good. You have the Grotesques that spawn the worms. Really good. So this is one of the top monster types to actually fight on big maps because you can kite elites with you and you constantly supply more area damage from all these extra monsters. So this is actually a very good monster type to get on almost any build. Problem is they're kind of slow, so it's hard to pull them together, especially when you get a very long linear layout map. But if you get a four corner festering, which you might see here in some moments, I think the battlefield is also four corner we just had. Here's another one. Um, yeah, this can be really nice because you can pull zombies from all directions. Here's Moldus, absolutely terrible and dangerous with the Succubus projectiles everywhere. So this is usually something to avoid. Those Molo Legionnaires here, they um, go into stone form when they're low HP and they heal. Which is amazing when you find them as elites and they have shielding on top of it. So they just shield themselves, go in stone form and 10 seconds later they heal to 70%. So if you find those as elites, you basically never try to kill them. Here we have Toxic Lurkers, the big spiders. Uh, usually pretty terrible because they are too fat, too slow, can't really be stacked very well, no area damage, not really that great. Okay, here's the Eternal Forest map and we have, uh, this is the God Comp it's called. It has that name because of Season 9 when this was by far the best monster in the game until it got nerfed after that season. Uh, you have like lots of these summoners and cultists and these hellions and the summoners summon even more hellions. But those summons, as opposed to most other summons, actually don't give extra progression, but they give extra area damage, which is kind of helpful. It can still be okay, but nothing really crazy, this monster type. Here's a desert map, one of the, like, yeah, decent maps at least, and we have Slashers. Slashers is very good. Not this season with Ring of Fire, because you need many kills and it's hard to kill them, but they are typically very high progression, same with those uh, horrors that are located here. And there's also some small stuff here, and you have, I think, even shamans that survived, uh, that revived the little fallen dudes. So very nice. Yeah, this is definitely one of the top tier monster types for many builds. Because they follow you well, and they are super juicy, and allow you to kill elites. Okay, we got Lacuni Face Beast here. Uh, they're actually called Warping Horrors, but they have the nickname of Face Beast. And there is Mothers. So this is really what you want here, the Mothers. There's packs of five mothers sometimes, and they spawn zombies, and you try to not kill them too fast, so that they spawn more zombies. I think they can do it like, I don't know, three, four times or something, and you have like a 25 zombies and lots of extra progression and area damage juice. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, we're speedrunning, going through almost knives in five minutes. Let's go. <laughs> red archers, you ain't grouping us. Yeah, one of the issues of red archers is you just can't group them up for the area damage most of the time. 
it depends a bit like this is not always the same for every build so some builds that can pull enemies together like rage flip barb builds and stuff definitely you know it changes a bit the balance between the monster types some of these monster types are simply bad because you can't kite stuff together this is actually also one of the top tier monster types this is uh, transformers it's called because of these guys the dark vessels they transform into unholy thralls if you wait long enough next to them and keep them engaged and don't kill them fast enough so here you'll see them transform these guys and they give like not lots of extra juice on your map so this is very nice and if you get this on like a really big open map festering woods you um, get so much progression that you can actually get a one floor map 100 percent because um, these dark vessels essentially give zero and they're not really priced in basically oh look here there's a shielding blue mortal legionnaire this is the perfect pack to never kill here yeah, this is the one i just mentioned Yes. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is this is nice here, but obviously we have a Corvus, so this is like not a map that you would ever attempt on a push, on almost any builds. Although Corvuses can be really huge, you see how big this is. You can actually get one floor Corvuses. The problem is that in a push, this is irrelevant because you just can't kite stuff through this, and you need to kite stuff. So a spy on the other hand is good for that so, usually, but very often you find these like small silver spires, especially when you see many bridges here at the start. It means, um, yeah, here's the exit. So it's very rare that this leads into like actually open rooms if, if it starts with those bridges already. And typically you just skip the entire thing. But if it's a big silver spire, then it's gonna be really nice. Uh, let's go next. The monster type we had there was Red Fallen. It has the Red Fallen Overseers, I think they're called, and the little fallen dudes and stuff. Typically pretty bad. It's quite juicy when you can kill everything really fast in a speedrun. But in pushing, it's kind of bad because these guys are very slow at following you. They always stand still and then start shouting. And then, yeah, they, they are really lazy. So it's very hard to pull them together. And even if you do, they are so tanky, it's really hard to kill anything. So, yeah, here we have keeps, obviously terrible. And we have bogans. Bogans is very good in a map, uh, in a season of Ring of Fire because they spawn boggets. Boggets give you easy Ring of Fire stacks. Same as in seasons 19 and season 21. So usually not a great monster type, but in a season where kills matter, this is very nice. Because you can get Boggets and they are like one of the smallest monsters in the game. And you can get easy stacks. Oh, here's Wild Swarms. Wild Swarms is the one monster type that you can actually progress on on almost any build in essentially every single map. So even if you have this little area crater, or this uh, Hell Rift rather, uh, you typically can make at least one little pull here somewhere and get some progression and move on with wild swarms. Ah, here's Hoxies, um, named as a tribute to Hoxango, in, guys, in case you guys know him. They are extremely toxic and the worst monster type in the game. So always avoid this. Super dangerous, nothing gives progression. It's beautiful. You can pull like 500 guys together and you get like 10% progress. Beautiful. Transformers do quite some damage. Yeah, they can charge you and stuff. But if you have like a tanky push build, then usually this is it's fine. Yeah, the swarms are really good because they stack together. Like they, you easily kill them through armor damage because they just, you know, become a big ball of flies that follows you. Uh, here is also one of the worst monster types: is oppressors and succubus. Uh, really terrible. Everything has really large collision boxes, so you can't really stack them for air damage. Everything is super dangerous. You have succubus projectiles to dodge. You have oppressors that charge you and breathe fire. Everything is horrible here. And it doesn't give progress. It's, it's great. It's basically like the Hoxies. So always avoid this if you can. Basically means like insta skip. And the map is also not really great here. Like this is like really, you know, spaghetti. And you have these doors that block stuff. It's great. So let's try to find the exit here. Okay, here's a festering. Let's go with red archers again. Yeah, festering. Let's talk about the map a little bit. This is a non four corner. This is like a linear layout. We can see this because we go around the corner and there's no um, like split into two different uh, routes. But basically, this is like the linear layout, and there's also the four corner layout where it splits into two paths and there's like a like a square, basically in the center of the map. So this is the best layout you can get. This is not the good one here. And sometimes, even if you get festering, it can turn out to be extremely terrible because of like you know this really long straight path. You see here all these like little trees; they block enemies, and it's hard to pull stuff through. But um, yeah, this is just what you have to deal with sometimes. 
Here's Blazing Guardians, also one of the worst one steps in the game. Extremely dangerous, nothing really stacks up for area damage, they always run away, and they shoot fireballs at you, and you fucking melt. So you gotta be super careful of those, because um, yeah, if you stand still on endless walk builds or something, you die. So this is also something to avoid at all costs most of the time. Here's Vyasons again, keeps. So if you're doing like some kind of casual push and you're not really trying too hard to go like super high, then you can easily progress for a map like this. Like this could actually be like, you know, a kind of juicy, easy 30, 40, 50% progression. Just don't try to kill any elites. Just get like those ju juicy pulls here, you know, pull these vice swarms together, make a pull here somewhere from all sides, blast down the trash, move on. And you can actually get some kind of decent progression here while getting through this map. So if there's like a follow-up to a map or even start on this and you find this monster type, you can play it on, on many builds at least that don't rely on insanely large pulls. So unless you're like a Mundunugu Witch Doctor or a Wave of Light Monk or something where you have like really bad DPS but you hit many many targets or you acquire many targets to deal damage, then this is actually fine. Here's Eric Crater. Can turn out really good, can turn out really bad. We have a um, mediocre setup here. Um, layout, I mean. So this is like the kind of like long path here, but it can lead into a really big room. There's like one of two layouts here. This is not the big room. It has these side rooms here. Usually you don't go there. But it can have this really large room here where you get a lot of progression. So typically you just want to rush straight there unless you do like a little pull here in the start. The Hulk monster type is typically not really great. Here's the Crawlers, um, has lots of small stuff to get easy kills, but has the issue again, everything is super slow, you have these zombies and these crawlers and they kind of don't follow you, and the cool things as well. So while it's kind of easy to kill everything there, it's kind of hard to make pulls that are actually worth something on this monster type, unless you can make pulls, if you can like rage flip them or stomp them together, or you have, I don't know, Piranado at least, or something like that, you can get quite easy kills there. But if you don't have something like this, then it's not really great. Alright, here's more Corvus. We have the um, Anarch Exarch combo. This really depends on the build. This is quite juicy monsters, but it's uh, kind of tough, both because they're dangerous and because um, they are all like medium sized trash. So here you have like very like similar um, HP values on all trash, which is kind of the advantage here. And you have stuff that follows you quite well, like the Anarchs and the Assassins. So, so some builds that don't require insanely high density, this is actually um, pretty solid sometimes, but only on a really big map. Here's a, a yellow unburied with two guardian minions. So as I'm fishing for these um, Illu terror demons right now to get infinite spawners, this is another pack that is, can also spawn with illusionists and they spawn like tons of skeletons. So this is not good enough to complete the run on its own, but it can give you lots of extra area damage from those skeletons and some extra progression that can be really nice to get on a big map. Yeah, on inner, exactly, like this Anarch extra combo, especially on something like inner, where you actually kind of want small pulls, it's quite juicy. Where you don't rely on area damage and stuff like this. Okay, here I have the, um, the Bogans again with the Mega Brutes. The Mega Brutes are really nice because they spawn these little maggots, and they keep spawning them as long as... Oh! Look at the combo here, there's a Shrieking Terror all oh, right, I thought it was an elite, okay. Uh, so these Shrieking Terrors also, they make like big Bogans out of the small Bogans. And you can actually get Shrieking Terrors as illusionists and they can actually keep making big Bogans. It's also some kind of like infinite spawner combo. If you get it on this monster type though, so this is kind of rare that this happens. But if it happens, it can be incredible as well because they keep making big Bogans and those big Bogans make small Bogans. And then those small Bogans get transformed into big Bogans again by those illusions over and over. Okay, here we have the snake monster type with the electric snakes and the, the um, this other stuff here, Black Clan Sorceress. Uh, pretty terrible in general because everything is kind of like tanky and doesn't really group up. This is the Blue Fallen. This has these executioners and the demon, demon raiders and the big fallen dudes, the blue ones. Let's see if we can find one of these. Actually, not a single one here. Anyway. This is called Blue Fallen. This used to be also one of the best monster types in the game, like back in Season 4. But uh, not anymore these days. But you saw again this was like a small silver spire. Sil a small silver spires, I think, just appear way more often than the big silver spires. The big silver spires can be incredibly good maps. Potentially the best maps in the game, but 
it's extremely rare that the Silver Spire turns out to be good, that's the problem. The Festering Woods, on the other hand, is usually quite consistently good, same as the Battlefields, but the Silver Spire can be ridiculously good in the right layout. Okay, here's another uh, Hellrift with the Crawlers, nothing special here, just get the whole thing, but theoretically it could make a little pull here in the Room of Lakes, depending on your build. Just, you know, go through this real quick at 5% progression and run to a Culver's and leave. This is Mini Spiders. Um, again, in a season where kills matter, like Season 19, Season 21 and Ring of Fire gaming, uh, Mini Spiders are really good because they are some of the like, smallest monsters in the game. So you can just go and kill Mini Spiders and get your stacks. But typically, yeah, it's kind of like a mid-range monster type, I'd say. It's nice, it has like all these spiders and stuff, but these spiders tend to kind of like chill and throw webs at you from the distance. Same with those impalers. But it's typically a good monster type if you can stack them up. Or for something like Uliana, for example, you can get lots of extra explosions because of the, all those extra little spiders and stuff. So on these builds, this is a pretty good monster type. But on builds that don't move enemies together themselves, it is um, it's pretty terrible. Yeah, goats, unbirds, spire. That used to be really good with unbirds. But, um, the unbird ones that got nerfed heavily. It's not really great anymore. This was like season one, season two. Okay, here we have Hoxies again. The best part about Hoxies is you also have these Blood Clan sorcerers. Here, these dudes, and they um, they make a they make a shield here. You see, this is the shield, and this reduces like damage taken by I don't know how much, like ninety percent or more. It's it's basically if oh here's a Edo Terror Demon. Ah, Pluto, <laughs> unlucky. <laughs> these are the guys we're fishing for, but that's yellow. Ah, unlucky. This would be a pretty bad map to get it though, because everything is really narrow. So it, it usually these, this uh, woods map, it can be alright if you get like small monster types that actually move through those little corridors. But if you get like big stuff, here these gorgers and whatever, you can't make pulls. Oh, here's a festering zombie grotesque. Let's see. But also not a four corner. We can tell because we have to go around the corner here. So it will be a linear layout yet again. Uh, it can still be, you know, it can still work out really well depending on, you know, where the elites are distributed. Typically, you want to get elites early in the map. So you want to enter and then you want to have like, five elites right there so that you can, like, you know, slowly drag them through the entire rift, deal damage to them as you progress, and then eventually you get, like, you know, a power or a shield or a colony or everything. And this is how you clear the entire map. Because if you get the elites too late, if you find elites here, like I had just you know three packs here, and there's even one more pack here in the corner, you'd never kill them, right? Like even when you get them here, you have to hide them down there, and realistically they will be here, and just everything will be dead, and the elites survive for 30%, and you just leave them behind. Yes, by smart. Goodbye. Yeah, those bloodline sorcerers, you have to be careful because you can get them as elites, and they can also be illusions. And then suddenly you have like 20 of these guys that spawn, or that make shields on everything, and you literally cannot kill anything. So those shields on Bloodland Sorcerers can really mess you up. You gotta be careful of those when you find them as elites, especially as illusions. So this can be very annoying. Ah, here's the goats. Or, ah no, this is the... It also has goats. It's the bad bogan combo. There's a good bogan combo, the one for Maggot Brutes that I just showed earlier. And it's the bad bogan combo, it's called. Because it has all these trappers, and it has these goats, and it has the yellow fallen dudes, and everything sucks, and there's no extra spawns. So goodbye to this. And here's a little cave. Beautiful. With God Comp. Okay. Yeah, God Comp is not exactly godly anymore, so this is just kind of... It's alright. Here, if you run to a room like this, here you make a pull. Can kill some stuff. This can be alright, but it's nothing crazy usually. Why do people say porcupines and goats are a good monster type? You find them super frustrating. Well, we don't go by what is frustrating, we go by what is good, Barriaga. And ice porcupines are in fact really good with the goats. The good part about ice porcupines, let's see when you find them, is that um, they come with the goats as well and you can kind of like make rather large pulls because stuff follows you rather well and everything has very similar HP values on that monster type. Which is the advantage that you kind of, you know, you don't thin out the pull and lose your area damage as you kill stuff, but everything kind of dies at the same time, which is really great. And gives you kind of juicy progression, and has rather high HP, so that you actually can kill leads as well. Now here there's like one of these worst case scenarios, Red Archers, Best March, beautiful map. So you have to try to find your way out as fast as possible. And uh, just go next. Yeah. And you have another Pandemonium, with Be Accursed. Yeah, this would be a map where you can definitely make some pulls in a room like this. 
be a curse is nice, make a big pool, blast it down, ignore elites. Basically, the bottom line is of all these bad maps, you always ignore elites. You never try to kill elites. You just go into like a room like this, pull stuff together, blast it down, move on, and forget about elites because they're gonna be like 90% HP and take like around 12 minutes to kill. So, goodbye. Here's desert. Desert can be nice. Terrible monster type. So again, desert can be four corner, it can be linear. In this case it's linear because we went way too far already without actually getting a turn. So here, one of these sides will be a dead end. In this case, the bottom side, as you can see here. And uh, yeah, you just keep going basically, you try to like get the dead end. Like if you know that this is not a four corner, you try to like clean it up. You can definitely kite stuff through this and potentially even kill leads on the right monster types here. Because this is like long enough. Let me go next. West Marsh can also be frustration, yeah. Especially if you don't find a way out immediately. So West Marsh can also have this kind of like four corner layout and then you have to find the right exit um, as fast as possible. But it can also kind of be juicy. When you get beer cursed or wild swarms or something on a rather big West Marsh map, again, these are monster types where you can just like make trash pulls and you can be fine, at least like, you know, progressing through it a little bit instead of just entirely skipping. But yeah, basically, you need these juicy small monster types that follow you to make something like this work. This is like the kind of like rule of thumb. For bad maps, you don't kill elites and you need to have like some... Yeah, this is also a very good monster type. You get on even bad maps. This is chickens, it's called, because of these guys, the armor destroyers. They're called chickens. Uh, this is typically one of the best monster types in the game because you have rather easy kills to get like Oculus Rings all the time from like a small uh, bat stare and everything just follows you quite well. You even have corpse razors that spawn a bit of new stuff. Um, yeah, you can definitely, you know, here, at least in this room, you can make a large pull and maybe even in this room here and just get a bit of progression. So getting chickens on a big festering is really nice usually, but it's kind of hard because uh, you don't kill elites very well with them. So while the trash is very juicy, you might end up with basically no elites dead by the end of the floor because they don't have that much HP and you don't get that much area damage for the elites. So this is kind of an issue there. Okay, here is, um, this is Hulks and Golgas again. So this is something that would be like an entire skip. Like nothing here is really worth fighting and you have like, you know, some crappy elite packs as well. So this would be like immediately a regame basically if you open like something like this here. Just have to try to find the, uh, the exit. Again, you can also have a kind of like a, a square layout or you can have like a linear layout and they have different sizes on Corvus. So you have to make sure that you understand in which map you are and then you can kind of like tell which way to go. Here sometimes you have no option but to actually check all the corners to, to find the right path. Now we have to go through this here. This is really bad. So this room is nice and this room is kind of bad usually if you want to make like a little trash pull. Okay, here we have the so-called empty monster set. This is the Skeletal Beasts and Dark Berserkers. And it typically spawns with extremely low density. As you can see, there's not really much here. This is a juicy monster type for something like Inner Monk actually, because again, Inner Monk doesn't really want large pulls, but every other build in the game basically wants large pulls. So you don't have air damage on this monster type, unfortunately, but it's kind of juicy if you can kill them. Similar to this here, that's actually also not a bad monster type for something like Inner Monk. But most other builds don't be like the... Ah, this is a four corner festering, by the way. So we went down here and there's the... There's the corner. And here's the next corner, so this is connecting now. You see this? So this is the so-called four corner layout. Where this is like a whole square here. And then you have to find the exit on one of the sides. So this will be down here. Yeah. So this is kind of like a dream map here. So you go in there. It can be a bit better because here you see there's like all these trees that block enemies. And one thing to do when you enter for corner festering is you can kind of like go straight every single time and then you can kind of like pull the rest from the top down there. But it's usually hard to do. Like it's very easy to take this turn here to the left or to the right in this case and kite stuff through this and then kite it down from there the other side. You can do both. So it depends a bit on like, you know, what is the distribution of the enemies and the elites right now. And then you can kind of like, you know, pull everything together and then have like, you know, some massive conduit that kills seven elites or something like this. So that's basically the idea in those maps. And it's like how you push to the highest tiers. You have to invest quite some keys to actually get such a layout. 
I think it's a 2.5% chance when you open a, a, a map. So yeah, 1 in 40 keys to get a 4 corner festering, something like that. And then obviously you don't want a really bad monster type, so the energy can increase more and more depending on how high you want to push. The difference between maps is much more important than the difference between monster types, but yeah, monster types still matter for like the last few tiers of fishing, I would say. Usually it's more important to go for a good map and then monster types is secondary, but if you want to push for like the absolute maximum, then monster types matter. Okay, here's the Eric Crater. Let's see this side uh, maybe. We have Hoxies again. So, worst monster type in the game. And we also have the worst arid layout on top of it. So this is usually the one you spawn here. You go this long path up here. You have this little... Oh, it's actually a big room here. So this room can be nice. Because you can also pull stuff here from the side. So if this turns out to be a really good monster type, you can do like one pull there, one pull there, and one pull in the last room. But typically, again, you can't really kill leads on this because it's just very hard to kite them through this little corridor. So again, this is like a map where you basically only do trash pulls and then move on. Here's Red Archers again. Uh, let's just go next, I guess. Okay, here's Red Fallen again. So this is something that's like absolutely skip. So here you have like small monsters like the Fallen Dudes and these Archers, but that's about it and these, these guys don't give any progress really. So even if you can kill them, you know, you could make a pull here. But then you have basically all the progression of this monster type is these big fallen guys and you're never gonna kill them on a map like this. Takes forever. The dogs are also kind of fine, but you have to get like massive bulls in this monster type to have a chance to kill all these fallen dudes. So this is like a skip. Here's more. Oh, red archers again. Yeah, you keep seeing the same stuff. And in case you're wondering, there are 33 monster types in the game right now. They removed I uh, know, I think 15 or so since the start of GRs. So some of them were straight up just removed and basically never replaced. Oh, here's Horse of Agony. This is with uh, Chargers and Frogs. So these little dudes here, the Scavengers, they're called Frogs. Um, they're nice because they kind of like follow you and they give you like lots of free error damage and these return executions are typically quite nice. Even though they're kind of slow, they also follow you quite well. They kind of like hunt you down, you know, they want to execute you. But um, yeah, it depends a bit on, on the pulls here. So, so far there was no pull that's really worth making in this map. But if you get this on a big open map, this can be kind of fine. And here we go. Teddies and unicorns. Yeah, there used to be a teddy only and there used to be a teddy and unicorn combo. And there also used to be some other stuff with like armor dawns and these kind of things and they were removed at some point. And I don't know, a bunch more that I don't remember right now, I think. Here's obviously Sewers with Lacuni face piece again. So again here, if you find many packs of mothers, let's see if you find them, if, especially if you find like two or three next to each other, you can try to let them spawn zombies and do like a nice pull there, and then you just skip the rest. These face pieces here, or these warping horrors rather, they are really tough to kill because they teleport around all the time, they deal a lot of damage, here's the mothers. So they start spawning already. So basically you want to stay like close to them, so they start spitting zombies and then like they wait 10 seconds and they spit more zombies and they wait 10 seconds and they spit more zombies and you essentially have like a full corner filled with zombies. You blast it down, you go. But yeah, just these Akunis and just the horrors is not good enough. But again, if you find this monster type on a big festering and there's like six packs of mothers somewhere across the map, it's absolutely nuts. In fact, this was the first time I've ever had a one floor map in the push ever in season 20 I believe I made a video about it actually talking about it and it was like a 140 I've cleared with Tempest Rush back then which was absolutely nuts and uh, this was pre Nemesis Bracer at the times so this is how good this monster type can be but if you don't get mothers it's not great okay here's the keeps one thing to keep in mind in keeps is that you can get a wall of fire rooms uh, I'm not sure if you're gonna get one here but maybe Wall of Fire is very dangerous because it sets not just you aflame, but also the monsters. And if the monsters walk to you, they're like the living torch and they burn you. And this deals incredible damage. So you gotta be careful with those. And it even says like when you die to it, uh, killed by Wall of Fire. We didn't get one here, but yeah. Also we had the goats monster type with the unbirds, but there were no unbirds. 
Yeah, this is this is kind of okay here. This is like the frogs and the Golgoths that we just had, just on a good map. So here you can definitely make nice pulls. It's hard to finish the Golgoths, which are kind of important to get a lot of progression on this monster type. But if you can kite them along like this here, you can easily kite. It can be fine and can, can be quite nice to just like, you know, do a big pull here, blast everything down, move on. The execution has follow you. So this is this is kind of okay. Kind of like a mid-range monster type, I'd say. And the layout was also fine for linear, um, linear fast turning. Here's Transformers. Not for corner, unfortunately. Again, this is linear because of this turn there. But it can be nice. Like the linear layouts are not necessarily terrible. Depends on the monster type. If you can kind of like pull stuff with you all the way, this is, can be quite good. Yeah. And here it really depends as well how good this monster type is, depending on how many dark vessels you get. You can get like massive amounts of these and then they all transform into unholy thralls and this is the juicy part. So this is also similar for most of these summoner monster types. Basically they, some, the summoner monster cards are typically good because of the extra summons or because of those you know transformers. So this is usually what makes them really good. But then you also need to get the right monster distribution. So you can get these monster types and there's no mothers on the Lacuni face beast and there's almost no dark vessels on this transformer monster type. And yeah. Here in this map it's usually worth checking the top part because there can be a pylon. So if you made a lot of progression, you know, going through the map here and you might run here to this exit and this is actually close enough to spawn the pylon here. But you might not see it because it's off screen because I think it's here. So basically you can not explore it but the pylon will be there so you always better be careful. Especially if you made a lot of progression right before you enter this, this this exit. Transformers never transform. Yeah, um, you kind of have to um, get a feel for how they behave. So the Transformers, you can like dot them up for example, or you can shoot at them sometimes, so they stay engaged. But if they disengage from you, from the fight basically, they will not transform. So you have to kind of like stay close to them, or position a pet next to them, or position your follower next to them. So that there's like something very close to them, or do you continuously deal, da deal damage to them, and then they will transform. So this is what you want to do on Transformers. So you can't just, you know, run there and run away, this will not work. And here's Ice Cave, it's like, yeah, one of the worst caves. Or in general, the caves maps are not really great anyway. So this is typically something to avoid. And here's also Anak Exarch again. Yeah, Anak Exarch in the sewers would probably not be good enough for most builds to try because you don't really have large enough pulls. But if you get this on like a big map, you can definitely take large pulls and blast it down, it's nice. Especially builds that have massive AoE, like Multishot or uh, Wave of Light or these kind of builds. So it depends a bit on the build you're playing and like how many targets you want to hit with your build. So typically a lot on the big AoE builds and very little on like inner or Firebird, so this depends a bit on like, what you have there. Let's go next. If one moves fast through a high level rift, why pylons never seem to spawn? Because pylons spawn based on the progression you make and they don't kill anything, so I don't spawn pylons. There's a 1% chance when you want into a uh, greater rift that there's gonna be a pylon. And then basically for each, um, for each percent progression you make, if you spawn a pylon, or if you didn't spawn a pylon, it kind of like stacks up the chance to spawn a pylon. So pylon spawn mechanics, I've explained at um, various other opp opportunities, I actually have a video exactly on that. But in short is, you need to kill stuff to get pylons, and if you don't kill stuff, you don't get pylons. And uh, basically, whenever you find a pylon spawn location, uh, you, you basically get your chance to spawn one. So let's just say that, um, let's see where does a pylon spawn. So I think here can be a pylon spawn. So if you go here and there's no pylon, it means you need to kill more stuff to get a pylon the next time you go to a pylon spot. So the next pylon spot is here, and there will also be no pylon because I didn't kill anything. So going from here to here, if you want to spawn a pylon, you have to kill something to get a chance to get another one. You can't just run through the maps and expect to find pylons. This worked in Season 1 and in Season 2, I've, no, actually just in Season 1, until people started abusing this super heavily because I actually made a video back then explaining how the pylons worked and how you can abuse the system and then they changed it again to, to where the system works now basically because people were abusing it too hard to um, you know get clears. Okay here's Lickers, the Soul Ashes. 
one of the worst mental types, not just because it's dangerous, but also it gives terrible progression, nothing really stacks up because these guys are fucking huge with their collision box, no area damage, it's uh, also one of these super bad monster types. Although there are builds that can progress on this. Um, again, because you have a lot of like medium sized trash here, and especially if you don't rely on area damage very much, or if you can like, you know, group up for example with Piranado and these kind of things, it can actually be kind of alright. But usually it's not really great. Uh, here's a Salt and Cool map again. Let's go next. Is there a specific kill counter? No. The way that it seems to work is you have a base 1% chance to spawn a pylon without progression. And then every time you get extra progress, it's this chance to find a pylon next time you are, go for a pylon spawn location is going to increase. Up to 100% chance when you have 50% progression. This is not 100% confirmed, but this is somehow how it seems to work. So basically, you can get between two and four pylons in a rift, so it's like kind of predetermined. And then you are supposed to get your first pylon at least in the first 50%, and you are supposed to get a second pylon at least in the next 50%. And then sometimes you might get lucky, you get like one at 5%, you get one at 15%, you get one at 35%, and then, yeah. It can still take until 85% from there to get the fourth pylon, for example, or you don't even get the fourth pylon or something. So this is kind of, yeah, very hard to really predict. So it's kind of like you know trial and error to learn the system and understand you know when you're supposed to go for pylons. Typically, you want to go to pylons um, maybe every 15 to 30%, depending on how desperate you are to find one. So sometimes you have a push. And you need to find the condit around the corner or else the run has failed. You know, this is very typical. You know, we go through your festing woods and you have your six elites stacked up and you reach the end of the floor. Everything is like half dead. You need to get that condit or else you just leave. So you try, you know, desperate measures. Try to do a few percent progression. Try to spawn a python. Check a python spawn. Okay, there's nothing there. You try to kill a few more monsters. Maybe get another one or two percent progression. And if you had already done like, you know, 20% or 25% since the last pylon, the chances are pretty good you're gonna get one at some point by doing like another few percent. But if it doesn't happen, you just leave at some point. So this 33% progression is kind of, yeah, like a good benchmark, but you only wanna wait that long if you are on a map that hasn't, that doesn't have a lot of pylon spawns. So what is important is to learn the pylon spawns and understand where and when you can find them so that you can actually micromanage the pylon spawns a bit for your pushes. So in general, uh, yeah, around 30% is a good number, but only if you don't have many pylons on the map. So Festering Woods and Battlefields, for example, are good maps also because they have many pylon spawn spots. But something like Plague Tunnels, for example, you can actually get one floor of Plague Tunnel maps that can be quite good if you get like, you know, Be Accursed or Wild Swarms or whatever. So this can actually be a very nice map but you barely have pylon spawns sometimes because only the rooms have pylon spawns and like some of those like corners to the top. So there are actually plague tunnel maps that have literally zero pylon spawn locations or silver spires for example as well. So here is a pylon spawn and let's see if we find any others. Usually silver spire has you know very very few pylon spawn locations. Oh we actually got a big room here. So here can be one as well. And okay, this is like a very good layout for Silver Spy. Here's also one where I'm standing. And down here is also one. So this is actually like the, almost a perfect layout for Silver Spy with the big room and you can pull stuff from all sides and you have many pylon spawns. But very often you do not have this chance to actually spawn many pylons. So in a Silver Spy, for example, you would usually try harder to get a lot of progression early and then don't check for pylons for a long time to kind of guarantee you get at least one somewhere and then hopefully it's, it's like a good one that you need in that moment. Or you kind of like go through the entire uh, Silver Spire, make a lot of progression and then you go to floor 2, so you go in here and you spawn the first pylon there and you go back to the Silver Spire, make more progress, come back again to floor 2 and then you go up there to spawn the next pylon and then you can use them and run, run back to the previous floor. So this is also something you can do. Remember to check here for the pylon and then you go down in case you made a lot of progress here. Sometimes I found a good first map like Festing or Battlefields and I had 30-40%. I was finding at least a shield on the next map. Yeah, exactly. So 
You can decide to also block pylon spawns. So if you uncover a pylon spawn location, that one is gone forever. So you can kind of like, you know, just discover the whole map if you want and make sure that no pylon spawns on that map anymore, even if you kill stuff. And then you can go to floor two and spawn the pylons there and you can go back to floor one, kill more stuff, spawn the next pylon right next to the other pylon on floor two and this kind of stuff. But the problem with that is that typically you don't have the pylons exactly where you want them, especially if they're quite far and you have to run, you know, like 20 seconds to even get to that pylon spawn, you lose a lot of time. And you also lose time when the pylon would be active if you want to click it and run back. And you can actually lose pylons entirely by making too much progress without uncovering any pylon locations. So what I mean is that here, if you go through this festing woods, uh, you, you know, uncover the entire map and then you start killing stuff, you'll not find any pylons. And if you do like, you know, 60% progression on this map, then the chances are extremely high that you lost the pylon and you will not get that pylon anymore. Because you kind of like went too far and you're already in like the, the second pylon territory, basically, with your progression. And here's an error equator, so this is kind of like a really bad map to get when you want to do this strategy about spawning pylons on the next floor, because so far there is not a single pylon spawn. And it will be here in the last room and that's about it. Let's see. Oh, here can actually be one on the on the stairs. Yeah, so here's one. So you'd have to run all the way up here <laughs> for the first pylon on this map. <laughs> and then here's the second one on the corner. And that's it on this. So if you do this, then yeah, you're kind of screwed with the pylons. Yeah, so part of the reason why the big maps are so good for pushing is not just that they give you a chance to kill leads after like five minutes of kiting, but they also have more chances of getting pylons because you do more progression on the same map and you can stack pylons or you have like, you know, uh, basically more elites for your colony or for your power and these kind of things. Now again here, this is the anti-monster set. There's still a bunch of monster sets that I haven't talked about yet, so I'm trying to find them. I think we kind of like skipped through some of them as I was talking about the pylons now. So I will try to find the rest here and, and then talk about those. Yeah, there's also a lot of stuff to know about the leads. And about the monster types in general is also that um, they have different like behavior. So you always got to be careful and you have to pay attention. You have to learn every single monster type's behavior in how they follow you and how they attack you and stuff. So this is definitely something you want to pay attention to when you're pushing. That even if you get a good monster type, you need to be able to play around that particular monster type. And this can also differ from build to build depending on you know, how much you move around or your positioning or if you go invisible sometimes with smoke screen or spirit walk or if you have rage flip and these kind of things. So making pulls really depends on the monster type. Ah, here's the ice clan that we talked about way earlier. Yeah, pretty decent monster type, but not for the map like this. Here, these map, these pulls are just too small, basically. But if you get this on a big map, this can be very nice. Problem is, if too many porcupines, they kind of like run out of the pull and it's hard to finish them with, uh, with like missing area damage. But this is overall kind of decent monster type for many builds, at least if you have them on a good map. So far, no wall of fire for the demonstration, the blazing monsters. Yeah, I think there's like three different keeps layouts or something, so it's not exactly a super high chance to get the wall of fire, but I mean, everyone has seen it, so it's fine. Yeah, this would be an excellent map to get in a season like this. It's not for a corner, but yeah, you know, bike crawlers, mini spiders, mini stacks. You can get like, easily four or five ring of fires on, on a map like this here, because there's so many small guys. There's even a mother pack, so this can be nice as well here. So sometimes you get like these mother packs or some other spawners and you get like some extra monsters even. So you want to make sure that you abuse that and get some extra progression. Like the maggots I had earlier, these guys, the tomb guardians, all these like spawner elite packs can be uh, really helpful sometimes to just get a bit of extra stuff. Here you gotta be careful. Um, we don't, you don't know if this is like a noxious guardian or if there's like a blazing guardian or a shock guardian. If this is a noxious guardian, then you have to be careful because you can kind of like one-shot yourself by killing it. Same as these guys here, these are noxious guardians. If you kill them, they explode for poison damage. And um, this does heavy amount of damage. So especially when speed farming, you can die quite easily to this because it's typically quite squishy in speed farming. Ah, here's the charger monster type, yes. This is very nice. This is usually very good because you have lots of small, kind of decent trash that follows you, like these little uh, burrowing guys. And you have like the big dudes here, there's horn chargers and the savage beasts. So you want to make sure you kill those beasts here. They are juicy progression and you kind of want to let them follow you through the map. But here this is like a four corner festering. This is a very nice map. 
decent, decent monster type, not the best, but pretty decent. And yeah, most progression is actually coming from those big dudes here, so you have to make sure you, you kill them. But it can be very nice. Good map there. Yeah, Halls of Agony is also interesting because it has these zombie pits. So it can be like a really big room with like the holes in the ground and the zombies crawl out of them. So they give you like extra free progression and area damage. And potentially on certain builds that want adds on a boss, you can spawn the boss on a Halls of Agony and then go to the those zombie pits to get adds later in the fight after you have stack stricken. So this is also a very good strategy. So if you are very desperate against um, single target bosses, this can be a very good strategy to uh, to kill them anyway, even without a pylon for Nemesis Bracer. Yeah, here's the gold comp again. One thing to be careful about is the barbed lurkers on this. So these guys, uh, they shoot the poison darts and they hurt like hell. And if you have one sheet death, which is your enchantress, you might die right through it because it's a dot. And the enchantress sheet death protects you only for half a second or something, or one second. If it protects you at all, <coughs> which structure. And yeah, you gotta be very careful there with those. The trees. Yeah, tree elites are really funny. Like they do this ground effect. It looks a bit like um, like a bluish desecrator or something that roots you. And on top of that, the trees are, you know, you can't pull them. And they're also like hugely spread out. So for some reason, tree elites can be like spread out in like four different screens. It's really funny. Oh wait, this was the wall of fire stuff, right? Yeah, here. So this is what he talked about earlier. These wall of fires that come out of the ground, they can set monsters uh, ablaze. Here, like this guy. And I think that's actually, a, he's burning anyway. But what about this guy now? Here, you see, he's burning now. And then if you walk to him, you will burn as well. So this can easily kill you, you gotta be careful with that. Ooh, this is actually pretty juicy. Yeah, this is Eternal Woods, which is not really great. But with fire swarms, this would be a map to uh, to at least play a little bit if you're not doing like some rank 1 push. If you do like some kind of, you know, maybe one or two tiers below your potential push, then this would definitely be worth trying while swarms on this map. This is, yeah, this is a, oh, this is summoner monster type. Unfortunately, we don't really have that much to showcase. But here, these are the Tomb Guardians. And they spawn more skeletons on top of all the other skeletons that are around. There's also some shitty stuff like the ghouls. They're not really great. But you have usually insane density on this, especially if you get many of these Tomb Guardians, which kind of like mutters spawn extra stuff. And then you can easily make like, you know, lots of like big pools with small monsters. This is usually a very good monster to get on a big map. But again, has the issue you can't kite stuff together very easily. So this is kind of the main problem. But if you find these large pools, you can basically just kind of go, go through the map and try to find these large pools, blast them down. It can be super juicy progression. So you always want to make sure that you, you do that, basically. On some monster types, you can just kind of, you know, ignore kiting stuff for, for the fire floor, and you just go for the juicy pulls, and that's it. So kind of like how you play like a Pandemonium Fortress map. You just go into the room, kite stuff together, blast it down, move on. You kind of do it that way as well on something like this, this summoner monster type. Oh, there's again here. Same one. Here. This is the summoners again. So again, you can kind of like, you know, try to find a big juicy pose here. This is kind of a bad map for it. But look, here's a mother pack on top of it. Wow. Not horde, but it has five mothers or something. Yeah, this would be a nice room here. Because they also spawn zombies on top of it. <laughs> Pretty nice. Yeah, and you can definitely get like these corners full of, you know, skeletons and summoners. And stuff. Here, this would also be a pool worth making for sure. With all these little zombies. Even without mothers on a kuni face base. And then here's the exit, okay. Small layout again. Yeah, spider cave. It even has big spiders. This is basically act one here. <laughs> Toxic workers. <laughs> um, usually really bad because it, uh, they heavily nerfed it. It used to be kind of okay. And then for whatever reason they nerfed it. So it's only always one room. And it has this super long exit and super long entrance where there's basically nothing. It's really terrible. I'm not sure why they did that. I think it's just revert the nerf and even that would be kind of whatever. Now here this is like one of these, you know, the maps for Ice Clan. So, you know, it can make massive pulls. It can pull like you know, 100 goats together and they give pretty decent progression. Like one big trash pull of this stuff here could be like easy 10-15% progression while also, you know, dealing lots of damage to those elites. And then you can just kite them like the leftovers here to the end and then hopefully get your, your condi. 
Yeah, in this case, there were a lot of leads here towards the end. There was like one, there was one. So this is something that um, is pretty bad. Again, you want to get elites early, or you want to try to find elites early. So definitely at the start of such a rift, you want to explore a bit more, just to make sure that you find elites early and you can start progressing on those elites to try to kill them. How long do you typically wait for spawner to start kiting things? Uh, that depends a bit, but I don't know. You can just like look at them. You know, you see like the animations very clearly from the mothers spitting, or from the tomb guardians. They have like this kind of like laser type uh, animation when they spawn a zombie. Or a skeleton rather. So they do this like a few times and that's it. So half a minute maybe or so. I mean, yeah, basically you just see like, you know, when they pull things out and it's kind of time to move on. Yeah, this is the so-called ghost combo uh, because it has the ghosts and it has the other ghosts and the grave diggers and the moon clan ghosts and this kind of stuff. So it's a ghost combo. Uh, pretty good monster type, but super dangerous for many builds because you just take a lot of damage that you can't avoid from the assassins jumping at you and the ghosts also slowing you and draining you at range. It's very hard to play around this, especially on builds that rely on dodge. So for example here I have the Gogok, you can't dodge the ghosts. So monk builds in particular or some bard builds of the dodge shout are kind of squishy against this. Uh, but you get lots of juicy trash there, it's very nice. Especially if you don't get many of these chargers, these beasts. So you can kind of like make large pulls of kind of medium sized trash yet again and just blast it down. Problem is that it removes your squirts very easily, this monster type, so... There's also like a problem that some other monster types have that you cannot keep your squirts necklace. And if you have a build that uses squirts necklace and you get this ghost combo, typically it's not great because you have almost no chance to keep your squirts. But in like a rank 1 push, with a squirts build, depending on what kind of build exactly, you at least try to get a bit of squirts out of time during your push, at least when there's no big elites around to thunderstorm you all the time and stuff like that. And you might not just have, might just not have the damage really to kill those ghost types, but yeah. For example, Gold Age is such a build. Gold Age, you know, tries very actively to keep the squirts during the run as much as possible. Not in this season Ring of Fire, but typically you do, especially with Odyssey's end. And you have no chance to keep your squirts almost on, on a ghost combo. And on something like a Monk, actually, when you have Severity up, it removes your squirts anyway. So they don't give a fuck. It's a bug, but yeah. You can't you can't keep your squirts on like a Monk, for example, because they just go straight through Severity and remove it. Nice blue fallen again. I think I've covered most monster types, actually. I'm not sure what's left. But let's keep going for a little bit and see what we can find here, I suppose. Now uh, here's also the big room here. This is the big uh, area room. So you start out with this kind of like long path here. And then you can kind of like, you know, if there's a good monster type, you can pull everything from down here. You can have a pylon up here. You can pull everything from up here. And it's gonna be really juicy. Like this room in particular is nuts in some cases. But this is about it. So you have like a really long kind of like, you know, run to that point. But it can be pay off. Now here's the chargers again. Good map. This is also four corner. Yeah, this is actually a very good map here. Oh no, it's not for corner. Oh, I've got bamboozled. Okay. So that can happen, I guess. I expected it to kind of like, you know, spread out here to a square layout, but this was actually like a room that we missed now. So once you go here, you will be able to tell that it's not for corner, and you might want to go back and actually, um, you know, get the rest from the top corner there in case you missed it. And then cut everything down here for this linear layout. Kind of okay here, you can kind of kite stuff, you know, one way down. Yeah, by the way, in case um, you're wondering, the, the maps and the mobs are not connected. It's absolutely random what you get, what is the follow-up and stuff. This used to be different, so especially in the early seasons, there was kind of like a, a higher chance to get a repeat of the same map, or there were certain maps that more often led to certain other layouts. For example, you could start floor one on the Hell Rift and run through the Hell Rift in like 10 seconds, and it would quite often lead to Eric Crater or Silver Spire. I'm not sure why they did that, but this system has been abolished. So it's it's 100% it's random basically. You can get two fist rings in a row, you can get you know, the keeps into a Colvus, the Colvus into a keeps, the Colvus into a fist ring, the fist ring into a Colvus, it doesn't matter. And the same with the monster types, it's not connected in any way to the map. It's just a 1 in 33 chance to get the monster type that you want, or like any monster type for that matter. Oh yeah, here's um, Oppressors. Illusionist Oppressors, in fact. Perfect. Yeah, so these guys are kind of like the, one of the worst monsters that you get uh, as an elite. Because they are fucking huge. 
which means they block monsters from you know stacking up, and then they spawn illusions, so they have even more of these huge guys that block everything. It's great. So if you get these as blues, then this is kind of yikes most of the time. Oh, look, here's Terra Demon minions again from Metal Lord. Crazy. Ah, here. There's those trees. Nice. Beautiful later. You get sometimes three spaghetti in a row. Yeah, yesterday I had three battlefields in a row. I also had another map with three festerings in a row. With hoxies, hoxies, and red archers, I think. It was beautiful. <laughs> oh, wait a second. We have another monster up here, actually. This is also a very terrible one. It has the, the yellow fallen. So you have these big fallen yellow guys. And then you have the shamans and the little other fallen dudes. This is actually a combo of red and, and yellow, I just realized. Yeah, and they have to summon us. This is really bad. There's one redeeming factor to this, and this is lots of easy kills. So, for example, Uliana Monk. You can blow up all these fallen dudes, and then they get revived from the shamans, and you can blow them up again. They don't give extra progression again, but they basically give almost no progression anyway. But they can kind of, you know, get a lot of extra damage for those big fallen dudes and for elites. So, a build like Uliana actually kind of profits on this. It's not a good monster type necessarily for that, but yeah. Or in a season of, you know, kill streaks, like now. It can also be nice to kind of like very easily get to close to 100 stacks on your Yang of Fire and then carry your 90 stacks to floor 2, that is actually good. So you can actually do that, I've done this on some pushes. Like there's a service buy and pray for good S tier follow up. Uh, I talked about this yesterday, so theoretically the best case scenario is you go to through like a kind of like fast and small, it doesn't have to be small, but you go through a floor 1 really quickly and get like some progression, like 20-30% and then you enter your actual GG map this is actually kind of like the best scenario because then you basically start out with a pylon very early already and you can kind of like steamroll from there instead of you know just opening a floor one and getting like your GG one floor festering or close to one floor festering and then you end up at like 80% progression and then you have to get some kind of follow up and most of the time it sucks and you leave anyway but the problem with that strategy is that it just takes so long to play through so many floor ones for like five minutes slowly progressing to like 30% progression, getting to floor 2 and then eventually, you know, 1 in 200 or something, this floor 2 actually turns out to be incredibly good. Where you like finish and you get like a perfect storm of everything, right? So typically the more time efficient strategy is to fish for a good floor 1 and hope for some kind of okay follow up instead of doing it the other way around. While doing it the other way around is probably better, but usually don't do it. Or if you go, you know, completely extreme, then you want to get just two GG floors in a row, so that's basically the other strat. But yeah, if you want to fish like 10,000 keys and you have like, you know, three weeks to spend on your push, then you can do that, you can just, you know, fish for a GG floor one, play it really fast, just go for all the juicy pulls, ignore the elites, whatever, and then go to floor two, which is another GG woods that you then finish on, from like, you know, 20 to 30% to finish. So this is basically the best strategy, but it's also extremely unreliable. So, you don't really want to do that. Okay, here we have summoners again. In the keeps this time. So far, not really any big pulls with summoners and stuff. So here, especially if you get this monster type, as I men mentioned earlier, the summoners is very juicy. But we don't have skeletons here very much. I mean, we don't have the ghouls. The ghouls are kind of the bad part of this monster type. So yeah, if you see those big ghoul packs, you kind of ignore them. Here, there's many ghouls. It also bring the wall of fire again. Let's see if you can see the animation. You see this guy burning now? The zombie there is burning. Yeah, he will burn me when, I go, when he goes to me. Yeah, this would be a nice room here because he had the skeletons. And not really that much else here. So it's kind of a bad uh, distribution of monsters. Here's a nice room. You can maybe combine those two. There's even more summoners. And you see the animation of the Doom Guardians here. Like they're just summoned. Let's see again. Can we see them somewhere? When they do their thing. So you have to look for the animation of those guys here. I'm waiting for them to spawn. So you want to stay kind of like close here, you know, fight the stuff, put it together, like this. And then eventually you're going to spawn the skellies again. They don't do it that much, I think they do it four times or something. But it does help, especially when there's like three guys here and like three guys there, and suddenly you have like an extra 20 skellies. It's like a few percent progression, extra air damage. But yeah, they're kind of lazy right now, so... Oh yeah, by the way, if you see this leave game timer, and you're wondering where this comes from when you're in town, this is usually your enchantress if you have erosion skilled. So when she casts Erosion, it has a 5 second duration, it doesn't let you leave. It can also happen from like dots, when you have like Locust Swarm or Pain Enhancer and these kind of things. So you have to kind of like wait for those to time out, even if you're in town. 
Ah, here, this is a very good map. Be accursed. This will be pretty juicy, even though it's not festering and it's not four corner. But here, this stuff follows you fast. You can kind of play this well on a linear layout like this. Oh, a lot of talking here. Mm -hmm. Another. Oh, even better here. Same monster type. And this looks like four corner, actually. So here, yeah. Really nice. This will be like one of those GG maps to get. But typically, again, you don't get that much progression on this map, so you kind of have to be fast. So this is like a map, a, a monster type that you would have to play very fast to be able to actually achieve a, a clear. Because you don't end up with as much progression as on something like Transformer or Lakuni like Face Beast monster type. If you go through this map and, you know, like a few leads actually survive and stuff, because you don't actually have that much air damage for the leads, let's say you kill like two packs or three packs if you're lucky, and you kill like most of the trash, you're gonna have like 30-40% progression. While on other monster types you can end up with like 80-90% because they're just more juicy. But it's very good because you can play it very fast. You just run in, you know, kill the big packs, move on, and then get your GG floor 2 uh, spaghetti map. Speaking of spaghetti, what you need to know is you always spawn in one corner. In this case we spawn in the bottom left corner and you have to go to one of the other three corners. And you have to rule out the corner one by one basically. So here yeah, this is, the, this is the bottom right exit now, so this, we actually found it right right away. But if you go to the other exits, you can kind of like, you know, have to tell very early, like, okay, does it turn here? It turns, you see? You don't want to go there. Because this, if it was the exit, it would continue to the top left, but here it goes to the bottom left. And the same thing here, you can kind of see, okay, if you see this rock there, it means this can't be the exit. You can also see it from up here, usually. If you are on this step here, you can see that it kind of doesn't continue. So, you have to make sure that you find the right corner immediately and don't run through these, like, you know, loops to, uh, to return back and stuff. There's really uh, not, no reason to go there. Unless you made a lot of progression. There's, like, some pine spawns in those cases. What is the probability to have terror demons? It's around uh, 1 in 300 per elite pack to find a terror demon. Oh, look, here's one. <laughs> but it's blue. So, it's around 1 in 500, 1 in 600 for a yellow terror demon. And then around a 1 in 8 for uh, Illusionist and Slave Nightmare combo. Here's Shrouded Moors. It's kind of like the desert map. So it usually has like the same kind of layouts and the same kind of playstyle. And you know, like either Linear or Four Corner. Oh look, here's another this Festering. But you see sometimes, you know, imagine it's Floor 2 was actually Floor 1. And then you go through this on like a decent monster type, like Be a Curse. And then you enter this here with like 20% progression, you might get your first pilot right away and that kind of like, you know, steamrolls into the next pilot and then you get a corny somewhere in the middle of the floor here. So you can pull the leads from all sides, so that's kind of the, the dream scenario there. To start out a map like this with a bit of progression already, so that you can finish here very easily and uh, get all the pilots as well. Potentially even save a pilot for the boss and stuff like this. If you start out on this as floor 1, then you know, it might take you until here, to even have a chance to first start, spawn your first pylon and then you finish here and you have like one pylon somewhere on this map and it's like a channeling and it feels bad man but here's another one so in this case <laughs> that would be the dream actually so like Kuni slashes man really good monster type but um, kind of bad layout here like just very hard to kite stuff through those trees anyway let's go what can you play in hardcore without getting game bugs? I already see. Um, avoid the super like laggy builds. I mean, that's kind of easier said than done. So typically, builds that have like incredible like dot mechanics, for example, Firebird Wizards, uh, like some Witch Doctor builds, like the Zuni. Uh, okay, it doesn't have dots, but you have these like darts that do that produce a lot of hits. So anything that produces a lot of hits or dots is usually kind of laggy. Yeah, this is a terrible monster type again. This is like the the yellow falling thing with the shamans and the big fallen dudes. This is so bad here. This is also like one of the like bottom five, I'd say, basically. Right, so again, like how I went through the spaghetti map, I tried to rule out the corners, and then I went to the bottom left, and this was the right exit. So you have to in this map, you just have to try the corners one by one, but make sure you don't go too deep into the corner if you can already tell that it's not the exit. And sometimes you can even make a pull, at, at least in the last room. The last room of a spaghetti map is usually kind of decent if it's a good monster type. So there's usually a lot of stuff, so you can make like, at least one pull. And sometimes on like a central platform as well. 
So you can use that to your advantage when you go into a spaghetti map, they're kind of short. And you can maybe make one or two pulls on a good monster. Ooh, this is the dream here. Why is Swarms festering? This is literally the dream, but it's not for corner. So not exactly the dream, I guess. Yeah. In this case, you see this um this the, the the bottom has the dead end, so I want to make sure that you clean this up. Not much here though, so it kind of wasted this. If you go check these corners here on the bottom, make sure that you don't go too deep and you know you don't want to kite all the stuff down there. You just want to grab the monsters and move up fast so that everything doesn't follow down. Because then you were kind of stuck in this room there with all the trash and you have to kite it all up again. So you have to identify quickly if you want to stay in that room or just run out again and go up again because you have to go up here. But yeah, this is actually juicy monster type but worst case layout here. This is as bad as it gets for a fast ring. But for wire storms, not too bad. You can kill the wire storm packs and move on. And you would end this floor with like 20% progression. Go to floor 2, GG fest, never mind. And we leave. Yeah, this is like a full skip. And we got God Comp on a festering. Ghost packs here. Yeah, ghost packs again has like kind of the same issue. Like they move the squirts very easily and stuff. He has also corrupted angels. So also as an elite pack, you gotta be careful of those. They can like one shot you on essentially every single build in the game. They have like some, some slam attack that sometimes apparently crits for many times more damage and even like you know 20 billion toughness supports can die from that gotta be careful yeah one other general thing about these mo uh, maps is that even if you get like a gg festering with the right layout with the right monsters it can be really messed up by the elites that you get and you simply might not be able to kill those elites because they're like a ghost flying away all the time or they're like a scavenger that burrows all the time or they're like a tree pack or a metal lord pack or you have like, you know, four packs of wallers and wormholes that kind of mess you up on some builds. So it really depends as well on the elites that you get. Or you have these wasps, for example, they fly away all the time. So uh, typically the stuff you want to get is blue packs and like kind of like melee blue packs that don't, that follow you well, you know. Best case scenario, you can find like six Shadestalker blue packs because they follow you kind of and they have absolutely no HP. The thing about elite packs is that Blue packs have a multiplier to their HP, while yellow packs get a flat amount added to them. So yellow packs always have the same HP basically, or almost the same HP, so there's very little variance. But on blue packs, you have, you know, very small blue packs that die very easily, and you have really big blue packs like, you know, Golgors. They have a lot more HP than the regular monsters, and they still drop the same amount of progression gloves, so you gotta be careful and not try too hard to kill some of these blue packs. And also yellow packs are generally harder to kill than blue packs. Because you have to kill the one big dude and you know, very often you simply cannot kite them long enough for them to die. So elites are messed up, yeah, this is the bottom line. Yeah, at some point they decided, for whatever reason, again, to make elites completely random. This was also when they did like this big uh, Greater Rift revamp. So in the early seasons, elites were actually the same monster types as the monster type present on the map. So you had, you know, your unburied map of goats, and you could find goat elites, and you could find the unburied elites, and that's it. And also, I think Nemesis Bracer spawned like the same monster types. And at some point, I made it Nemesis Bracer always spawned as Act 2 dude. But it still works the same as it did back then in T16. So in T16, you can actually spawn the the, mon the map's monster type, basically. But in, in Greater Rifts, it's always the Act 2 guy, which is kind of bad. Because again, you have this uh, fallen dude and he shouts and he doesn't follow you and he's lazy. And you can also spawn spinners, so you gotta be careful to not kill yourself with spinners when you have a projectile build. So yeah, kind of a struggle. And then they also made like all the elites random. So it's completely random which elites you find. Which produced, um, or like, didn't produce a problem, but definitely made it worse. That basically there was suddenly a mismatch of HP values between the elites and the monsters. So you can get very small trash with very big elites, so you can't kill elites. I don't know why that was a thing, but this is how it works. Any mob type can have Nightmare Elo, yes. It's completely random. But the good part is that even if you push quite casually and don't want to invest much time or many keys, usually it's worth, you know, maybe throwing at least like 10, 20, 50 keys at it and try to open more of these like bigger maps 
As I mentioned earlier, the maps matter more than the monsters most kind of times. Especially if you are a little bit below your maximum potential. So if you, you know, if you just want to clear, I don't know, like if you have a character like my, let's say, Moodle Shot DH, I did 132. So if you wanted to do, let's say, 130 or 129 or 128, like a few tiers lower than that, it would barely matter which monster I get because I can kind of kill most monsters anyway. I can kind of kill elites a bit easier, etc. So you can still get bad and good monster types, but it doesn't matter as much if you go like even just a few tiers below the maximum. So the maps is usually much more important, just so you are able to actually make large pulls and like you know blast them down and move on. And then the higher you go, the more the mod monster types matter, I'd say. Aside from the you know, special cases of wild swarms, where the wild swarms kind of works on almost anything. Yeah, I think we actually went through pretty much every monster type now, so that should should probably cover it. We also seen I've seen many of the maps. I mean, there's definitely a lot to talk about with many of the maps. But um, yeah, here look, this is, this looks like a kind of juicy pull actually, right? But it's actually pretty bad because there's oppressors and ghouls. So first of all, these ghouls, you know, you see how they are not really stacked. They're like really large with the collision box. These ghouls barely give any progress. The oppressors also give really bad progression for how tanky they are. It's pretty terrible. If you have a really good AOE build, then yeah, you can blast this pull down, but it's it's not going to give you much more than like five percent or so. And talking about progression, you have to kind of keep in mind that on your typical build, when you want to spawn the boss after let's say twelve minutes or so, and you have like a three-minute boss fight, yeah, you have like around seven hundred twenty seconds in twelve minutes. So some bo some boss fights are longer than that even. So let's say you want to spawn the boss after ten minutes, you have to get roughly ten percent progression per minute or 8% progression per minute or something like this. So if you actually spend like 30 seconds on this pull, including running there and killing it, then it's already kind of not really worth it. You have to see that obviously you get extra progression from your pylons, so if you expect to get a colony, that's like, you know, like a 20% in one minute for free or 25%, or you have like a power pylon that speeds up a bit, so theoretically you can go below that value of 8% progression per minute, but it's kind of like the ballpark value to keep in mind when making progression. So you want to get at least something like 6-8% progression per minute. And if you have a pool, like here, that is not even worth 5% and you need like a minute to kill it, it's, it's not worth doing, basically. So you have to skip. Unless you're in the scenario where you are very close or you're expecting to be very close to a pylon spawn, and then you can use that few percent extra progression even with kind of like inefficient to get that pylon that then wins the rift for you. Like if you have those five elites stacked up and you need a colony to finish the rift, then you kind of have to do it, right? But most of the time when you just progress, you have to keep in mind like the time versus progression ratio. So you don't really want to dip below like 8% progression per minute or so on most builds, depending on how fast your boss fight is. So if you have a very fast boss fight, let's say Frenzy Barb, you kill the boss in 30 seconds, yeah, okay, you know, you can take your time and do something like 5% progression per minute. But if you have like, you know, Blessed Shield Crusader and need like 8 minutes for your boss, yeah, you have to get a lot of progression. This also means that when you have leftover elites and they're like 5% HP and you want to finish them, most of the time it will not be worth it because you will need like, you know, 2 or 3 convention cycles, it's like easy, half minute, 1 minute, to finish this 5% HP elite, which means you get like 5% progression after 1 minute, which is not worth, so you have to skip it even at 5% HP. 50 cent progress happens in one minute of the colony. Yeah, kind of, but not really, because if you have a colony that gives you 50 cent progression, then you have already invested a lot of time into those elites to bring them to lower HP, to kite them together, so this is kind of like invested progression that is like not visible on the bar yet, right? So basically, it's not lost progression and the conduit also gives you not that much because you kind of like build up for the conduit without actually having the conduit, right? So you prepare your conduit for like five minutes, you know, kite enemies together, bring the elite packs low, make sure everything's there, click the pylon, and then you get 50% progression. But theoretically, like 25% of progression was already hidden in the DPS you have already done, basically, over those five minutes. So this is something also to kind of like keep in mind when you click a corner. So you can definitely like, you know, fall behind and it's fine because you invest your time into those elites to set up for the colony. And then you get more out of it, of course. 
So yeah, this this is something to kind of like you know see, and you know you can do like yellow bar gaming, where you fall way behind on the timer, but you set up the big corny, or you even if you don't have the corny, you can play for the corny. So you can set up the corny without having it, and then just leave and you don't get it. So this is also a very common thing to do. So you start your fasting roots, you know, you play as if you get the corny exactly in the right moment, and if you don't, you go next. How much percent of a 150 Rift Guardian does one full corner do? Uh, with flavor, I think it's something like 25% or so. It doesn't matter if it's 150 or not, it's always the same. Condit always does the same like relative damage to a pack. So the Condit scales exactly the same as the monster HP. You can't change the Condit's damage unless in T16. In T16 it still works like the old ways where multipliers apply to Condit, but in Great Rifts they don't. So usually a Condit takes something like 20 seconds or so to kill a full HP Yeddo. If it continuously zaps that Yeddo, but if it has many targets, it might not. So it might be longer than that. Which typically means that if you find a fresh HP, like full HP Yellow, on a Corny, you typically do not want to kill it with the Corny. So when I have, let's say, a really large pool stacked up somewhere, but it's not right on the Corny, I click the corny with the nemesis and I run away from the pylon pack. Like I basically never kill the pylon pack unless there is many other elites nearby. Because it's literally a waste of time. You spend like you know 30 seconds of the corny to kill one yellow pack that gives you like 5% progression. Like this is almost bad even if you didn't waste your corny on it. So you definitely want to make sure you use the corny on trash instead or other elites that are already like prepared and usually like multiple elites stacked up. If you have two yellows at the same time, it's kind of okay, but realistically you want at least like three elites or four elites or, you know, maybe you can also like, kill like a blue pack on its own from full HP, this is fine. So if you find blue packs, this is usually fine, but yellow packs is usually not fine for Cornelis, unless they are together with other stuff. Ah, look, here's a Juggernaut Molo, man, beautiful. Pylon location. Yeah, the thing is that it's kind of hard. Like, I know most spots, but I'm also not 100% sure about every single spot. So, some maps simply have a lot of pine spawns, and some maps have really few. So, you have to kind of like, you know, pay attention to pine spawn locations as you speedrun to try to learn them. So, always try to understand, like, where are the pylons. For example, here in this corner, this is like one. So, if you find a pylon there, this is kind of worst case scenario. So, you actually want to avoid spawning it there. But it's kind of hard to avoid it. For example, you can run up here, and when you're here, you're actually close enough to spawn it up there. So this can actually happen, and then you're kind of screwed if this uh, turns out to be like some very important pylon. VIP, literally. So you can definitely get screwed over by bad maps spawning like a corny or something in the wrong moment, and just have to leave, for example. Yeah, we have a list of like kind of overall good monster types and overall bad monster types on Maxor as well in the Greater Rift Mechanics Purse. But I guess many people have either not seen it or don't remember it, or yeah. It, I mean, again, this is also some kind of a very generic list, right? You can't really cover like the ins and outs of every single build against every single monster type there. So, but there are definitely monster types that overall work better than others, and some of them by quite a mile. So, yeah, the imbalance is huge, and for some reason they have never addressed it. This was actually one of the first things I ever worked on together with Rax actually. Like he actually messaged me back then when he made that one and you know asked me to go through it and give some input and stuff. <laughs> this was like kind of like the first time I ever kind of like had any attention drawn to Rax because I didn't really know him before. Like a long ago when he made that video. Yeah, I mean I also have, you know, especially like the super tiny monsters, and especially those like that, that get spawned, like maggots and these kind of things. And the uh, corpse worms, they usually have like you know way less progression than they should have because they're kind of like for free. Yeah, some other monster types are kind of like a bit premium, I think, for the HP because, for example, you can't move them around like Mandalores and stuff. It depends a bit, but the problem is that they've never really adjusted for the fact that you know the combos that these monster types have, right? So this is why some of these monster types just are so bad because they have like a very bad distribution of monsters where you have like you know some big dudes. And lots of small stuff, and this small stuff is not enough to give you enough area damage to kill the big dudes, so that you basically never get the, the big progression chunks from the big dudes. So the monster types just turns out to be terrible because it takes way too long to actually kill the big stuff. While in other monster types, you have like, you know, wild swarms and they stack up, you know, in a big ball, 
you do like three attacks and everything dies and you get like 20% progression. Easy. So they never really adjusted for area damage for these monster types, which is a big problem, I think. Is it worth to kill yellow minions? Yellow minions give exactly the same progression as the base monster type. So the answer is hell no. Minions are basically never worth. Unless they just kind of like die on the side. Good thing is that it kind of give you like free area damage all the time. But that's just about the only reason. What? <laughs> this double blue enslaved nightmare pack, man. Look at this. There's eight of them spawning shit. This would actually be hilariously good if this was, you know, floor one now. Oh my god. You get like 20% progress just here. In this shit. On top of Transformer, four corner battlefields. Actually nuts. <laughs> yeah, so I think this is probably enough for the info dump for now. Gonna leave it there. Gonna stop the recording. Hope this helps. Uh, more next time, maybe at some point. Who knows? Might be like some other stuff to talk about. I also wanted to make some kind of like more in-depth video about Rift Guardians at some point, but this is yeah pretty pretty rough to do because it also really depends on builds and stuff. I think we covered pretty much most maps and most monster types and some general things, so this might be fine. Yeah, I want to cut this a bit together a bit and then upload it to YouTube because we just like, you know talked about a lot of stuff now.